name is Ronald L. Vigu. I am the treasurer of the Berwick Cemetery Association. I've been a resident of Berwick since 1952. Uh, I was moderator for the town for a significant number of years. Uh, and about five or six years ago, the president of the association, next to me here, Tony, asked me to join. So I came on board as a director, and very shortly after, they made me the treasurer. And with that, I'll yield to you, Sergeant Major. Uh, my name is Anthony J. Sincotta, Jr. I've been in Berwick since 1934. Uh, You're old. <laughs> Uh, I am uh, presently the uh, president of the uh, board of directors of the Evergreen Cemetery Association. I've been a member of the association for approximately eight years, and uh, I'm very happy to have Ron Vigu as our treasurer because he's made nothing but good progress for this organization. Flattery will get you everywhere, Tony. Anyways, as far as some of the history of the uh, Buick Cemetery Association, prior to 1877, burial of family members and friends was done a lot on property owned by the individuals at that time. That was becoming a problem, okay? So in 1877, some Berwick businessmen got together and said that we ought to get, follow what was going on in, in, uh, in the rest of the states about having a public cemetery. So that's how the Berwick Cemetery Association was organized initially in 1877 by a bunch of local merchants who then proceeded to buy, I think the initial, the initial purchase was 10 acres and then it got bigger to, to the day we're now where we have about 50 acres. Uh, most of it still is in the rear of where we're sitting uh, in the wooded area. In, oh, I think it was in, the significant name uh, for this cemetery association is uh, Mr. Hill. Mr. Hill was a Berwick uh, individual who was involved in real estate and other businesses. And when he passed, he made a significant bequest At that time, it would be small money compared to the numbers we're accustomed to today. But he made a bequest uh, in his will uh, of $12,000 to build this chapel. He also made some other bequests on the remainder of his state, which is, uh, is about $90,000, was also given to the Berwick Association, a Cemetery Association which has been uh, very helpful to us as far as doing some of the significant renovations that we've done in the last few years. But Mr. Hill um, is the one that had this chapel built. It was built and uh, started in 30, 1932 and finished in 1933. And here we are. And the pounding you hear right now, if you hear the pounding, uh, and when they built the chapel originally, 
we had a slate roof. And uh, over the last few years, we've had some leaks uh, in the chapel, so we are having the entire uh, slate roof uh, being replaced at this time. But the first one are, what, lasted almost 100 years, so pretty good. The vast majority of that they're taking away, but we have uh, kept a few pieces so that if people want to pick them up, paint on them or whatever they want to do or a souvenir, they're more than welcome. But uh, that's where they're taking it most away uh, because there's too much of it, obviously. But the, we did keep a few pieces so that if people wanted one or two, for whatever reason, they are available. Okay. And when the chapel was originally built, what was it used for? What was it used, the chapel? Yeah. Oh, a non-denominational chapel, like in the military. Uh, and uh, Mr. Hill stated, I believe in the will, uh, that anybody that was having a service here or an interment could use the chapel free of charge. That's what he stated in his will, and we do that today if it does take place. But uh, I wanted to mention that this chapel now is on the National Historic Register of Historic Places. That was done a couple of years ago and we had a plaque put outside. 20, yeah, 2018 is when we got yeah, the designation. So, yeah. uh, it's a beautiful building, Gothic design, and we're doing everything we can. I have to understand what I got on the board there was no electricity in the cemetery. We put poles up and put electricity in here and heat. Uh, heat, <laughs> yes, air conditioning. Uh, the only heat in here was a wood stove of some sort no, downstairs. I mean, this place was, in my opinion, in trouble. The, the plaster was coming off the walls in the office. It needed to be looked after. And we've done that. Renovated, right. We've spent... A significant amount of money. A, a lot of money. And we're not done yet. Okay, so tell me some of the things that you've had done. Obviously, electricity, plumbing? Plumbing, uh, yes. We'll put a bathroom in. Put a bathroom in. Yeah. Heating. Uh, painting, obviously, of course. And one of the things that when Tony mentioned to get on the National Historical... Uh, register you couldn't change anything inside the chapel so if you were going to that to my room to my left there's the office door but then there's two other doors that were the original men and women's room but when we expanded our office we couldn't take those doors out because that would not have been the kept it in its original uh, architectural design so then we went all across the yellow hall and put a toilet uh, a bathroom in also I mean this chapel was used as a chapel but if you go down in the basement back in those days there were no winter burials okay so there's a significant I like half of the basement was uh, is used was used for to store the caskets during the winter months and they kept a obviously coal down there and uh, but now that we have the ability to technology obviously uh, we can do winter burials if we wish uh, but that was another function of the chapel was to uh, preserve the uh, the caskets and the remains until spring when, when the spring burial would occur and we've uh, also uh, had an artesian well put in outside. Yeah, a big significant. And a, and a leach field, obviously. And a leach field. And a leach field. And we've cleaned up all the drainage that was outside going into the road rather than where it should have gone. Uh, we own property here. Ronnie's right. Right now it's around 50 acres, but we own both on both sides. At one time. Yeah. At one time. I think there was 6.2 acres on the other side of the road, which we have... Uh, which we sold to the Bibber and Lang Funeral Company. Uh, we've done a lot of work uh, around the chapel as far as painting goes, again. Uh, we've also paved a lot of, you know, 
yeah, I don't know if you want to yeah. just concentrate on the yeah. chapel, yeah. but yeah. since we've been on the board, we've also built a pergola, which is next to the columbarium, okay? And we've also paved significant number of some of the uh, roads or lanes or whatever you want to call them uh, in the uh, cemetery. And now the garage up there where Tammy, our superintendent, who can't be here today, who's been very, a very great employee, but now that's electrified, so she has electricity up there in the garage. So that's another one. And then for future projects, uh, we're going to work on expanding the, if, the, the main driveway through the gate here is Highland Avenue. I forget what the name of the other one is, but to the left of that is where we're going to expand. So that will be a, the next significant project that we undertake. I think we're only using about 18 acres out of the 50 wow. presently. Yeah. Yeah. Correct. Okay. But as Ronnie said, we're going to have to expand. Uh, it's just going to happen. And the burials now, I mean, full Casket burials are probably 25% and 75% are urn cremation urns, you know, so yeah. that's, and so on the other side, when we develop that, hopefully the lots will be designed for more of uh, the cremation uh, burials. And I noticed you now do the column burials, or I'm not sure what they're called. Columbarium. Columbarium. Col columbarium is... Columbarium, yes. Yeah. Okay, and that's relatively new. Yes, uh, it, for us, okay, but it's it's very popular throughout the country, okay, and a lot of uh, cemeteries have done some very nice uh, designs, and that may be in the future for us, too, if, if people want to use, but columbariums in the Northeast uh, are not prevalent yet because we still can bury in the ground. Okay, other places across the country, especially in the south, and, and they don't they don't bury in the ground, so they bury above ground. So the columbariums have been very prevalent down there. I want to ask you about the um, windows behind you. Um, was any work done on those when you did this, or were they are they all original? I think Bailey did work on the windows. But They're original, but they, I think, yeah, I think the... Bailey, the, Earl, the Earl Bailey, painting the company. Painter, Earl, yeah. I mean, he does... I think he touched them up I or he cleaned he, yeah. them up. But they are like he's, they are original. That's what was here in the 30s. Yeah. I think, I think part of the, when Mike Lassell was the architect out of South Berwick that, uh, helped us design yes. And, yes. And, and kept us in track as far as what we could do and could do right. to get it on the history. But I think part of what uh, what uh, Earl did, uh, Bailey, I think the windows, didn't they get winterized or something? Yes, it was yeah, something. They, something, they, some they had to procedure. do something to get yeah. procedure to, to winterize them once we install the heat in here. Okay. And are there protective barriers on the outside? You may be accurate. I do not know for sure. Okay. Yeah, they did something to winterize it, yep. uh, Terry. Yeah. Okay. Good point. And we and we have floodlights, as you yep. can tell when you when you go home. Yes. And when he goes home, because you go this way. Yeah. And uh, it's it's. Uh, and I noticed you had to put lights on the garage up back. Yeah. Uh, we have two lights on the front of the garage right now. Uh, we didn't bring the electricity from down here up there. We brought it from the housing development on the other side. Yes. And uh, that was Ronnie's idea, and that worked out good. Yeah, because it's right there. Yeah. Thanks okay. to Jimmy Chandler. Yeah. Yeah, yeah Jimmy Chandler. Jimmy Chandler right, would yeah. give us an easement. Uh, uh, again, yes. we, we've got a lot of money invested, and uh, it's uh, well invested in our opinion. Yeah. yeah. One thing I think we should mention also, I mean, I mean, you know, if you want to buy a lot, that's fine, but a portion, I think it's worth 30% of all the lot fees, <laughs> mandatory, go into a perpetual fund. And that fund is not uh, the, uh, the original trustees, for whatever reason, may, they went to the town and uh, the town voted to accept that. So the town 
holds the perpetual fund, okay? And that perpetual fund, the principal cannot be ever used unless there's a disaster here. And we need, and they need that. But we can, but we do get the interest and the dividends that that fund earns on an annual basis to help us operate, so to speak. But the perpetual fund, thirty percent of all the purchases of the columbarium, no, not the columbarium, just the land, yeah. goes to the town of Berwick, and they and they maintain that perpetual fund for us. Okay. That's mandated, mandated by the state. By law. By law. We have to give 30% or put it in a perpetual care fund to take care of whatever the needs would be of the cemetery, as Ronnie said. But the but, principal cannot be touched. Right. Put, cannot be used to help renovate the chapel, cannot use, be used to pave, okay? That has to come out yeah. of our operating funds. Right? For a long time, the cemetery association was giving 50%, and we changed that. To required 30 okay. percent. Okay. We have a superintendent, like I mentioned before, Tammy Matthews. I think Tammy's, she won't like me saying this, but she's in her mid-40s. 50? She's been, she just turned 50. No, she's in her mid-40s. <laughs> anyway, but she's been here as a, as a child and working. Her father ran the cemetery uh, a long time. What was the question again? <laughs> what is perpetual care? Well, I mean, oh, that is what we maintain the cemetery, okay? It's a good question uh, about what the perpetual care fund, you know, is supposed to take care. People will donate or give the money so that their particular lot would be cared for on a perpetual basis, okay? But it's strange, but they don't let you use the perpetual fund principle to do that purpose, okay? So we have to do that. Uh, but our superintendent if you want to call her the perpetual carer of the cemetery, she takes care of the grounds. And, and that's the perpetual care aspect of it. That, that comes of our, out of our operating funds. Yeah. I think, from what I know, the reason that perpetual care came into <coughs> being was because a lot of small cemeteries, like us, who don't have the funds to do their expenses, they ended up folding, and the town taxpayers had to take over and do the rest. So the state came out with a perpetual care fund, which requires every cemetery, as far as I know, to give at least 30 percent. Public cemeteries. Public cemeteries, that's right. And now. private. Yeah. Maybe not Catholic or Protestant. No, no, yeah, but public. public. Yeah. And we are a private. Non-profit. Non-profit, public burying ground, but we're owned, operated, administrated by a board of directors. But anyway, that's where that's what I get from the perpetual care fund. Okay. State said you give money so that we don't have that problem. Okay. And just a, another historical thing. I think uh, a guy named Spencer, I forget what his first name, and then Bob Stillings. But there's like a there's over a hundred small cemeteries in the town of Berwick scattered all about where when we're talking about prior to 1877 they were burying them on their family plots and all that but there's over a hundred over a hundred cemeteries that are still there uh, in the town of Berwick no longer active there's two other public cemeteries Lord Cemetery up there on Wilson Street but that's hasn't been used since 1900 I can't remember the date then the Clark Cemetery which is on Blackberry Hill Road, but those two are closed. The state of Maine allows people to bury people out behind the barn, so to speak, if you do the paperwork and get permission and all that stuff. I think that's what we're talking about. And these cemeteries, are because the Legion went out and put flags on all these things if they were veterans buried there, and we knew that. But anyway, you can do that in, in Maine, you can bury someone out behind the barn or in the front yard or whatever if you get permission.
think I'm answer your question, the maintenance of those uh, are not the town's responsibility nor ours, okay? So they're on family plots, so I would assume that the family takes care of those cemeteries. The Legion, the state mandates that on Memorial Day, a flag be put on every, that's in the state law, a flag be put on every veteran's grave in the community, all right? So the town has asked the Legion to do that for the town. They reimburse us for our time and for the flags, okay? And we go out uh, and do, put flags on all those cemeteries, 100 plus, that have a veteran buried there. If we, if we know where the veteran's burial is. I was just gonna say, down across from you, Tony, in the woods across from you, there's a cemetery, a small cemetery back there. Near the Clement family. Yes. Um, and that one, I don't believe, I have never seen anyone taking care of it, but I, I do. Uh, I well, I think the town takes care of that. Oh, no, I don't think so. No? no. Well, I don't think that, that, there's probably no veteran buried there, okay? Well, that was what I was the say. oldest veteran that we know of is on, uh, who's the town cry? Peter Cook's property on Diamond Hill. Revolutionary War guy. I think it's a Revolutionary War gentleman down there. And that's the oldest one that I'm yeah. aware of yeah. where we have to put a flag. Yeah. There was some research done by Bob Stilling. Bob Stilling did a hell of a and, job. And uh, Mr. Spencer to find out where and who. And... Uh, you know, we, if we know where they're at, we take care of them. Yep. And uh, required by the state of Maine, as Ronnie said, a Memorial Day, clean up and a flag. Yeah. But, um, let's return to the chapel. Um, so, Ron, you actually told me that you had the paperwork filed by some lawyer. Yes, when, we, well, when, the, when this project was done, there were certain requirements that have to be, and I think Mike Lassell, the architect, is the one that made us aware of that. So you have to make an applic file an application, and uh, and you have to go through the state of Maine first. You state of Maine, and then to the uh, the state of Maine had first to acknowledge, yes, you are of historical value. You can proceed onto the federal thing. So we uh, and Mike Lassell uh, knew this uh, attorney named Christine Beard in uh, down in Massachusetts and she's the one that had to file the application and I gave you some paperwork but it was an extensive application when she did a lot of homework and a lot of research and submitted it to the feds and then uh, eventually we got approved thanks to her yeah. she did a lot of work I mean there's a lot of physical work that was done here by Mike and and, and the crews but I mean she did the paperwork part of it which was pretty complex so now that you're on the National Register, does it offer you any benefits? Does it, what does it mean Zero. for this? Zero. And one of the things I think when we first started this project was supposedly there were some tax benefits, okay, it went for all the refund, I mean all the money that we uh, invested into renovating the thing. But as it turned out, since we are not a for-profit corporation, and a non-profit corporation, we could not get the tax returns because we weren't operating a profitable business, so to speak. Uh -huh. So we lost out the tax returns, which, <laughs> anyways. We're gonna try to develop, our board member, Sheila Beamish, is gonna try to get up uh, and develop with the superintendent a historical walk. Uh, so that, and then we'll uh, offer that to the town, so to speak, if they want to come through certain times and take a walk through the cemetery. Uh, there's a lot of history here. Yeah. Uh, the garrison? That? Yeah, back on the back property out there is what we call the garrison house. The foundation is still there. Uh, and believe it or not, and you'll read that in the paperwork, the cemetery is close to the center of town. Uh, which until I read that, I was unaware of. But back there, the garrison house was back in the, in, you know, what, I guess it could be in the 1800s, where, and the garrison house was where people would come uh, for, to, for protection when the Indians were attacking. But one of those houses was out back here on the property. Yeah. 
Is there still a foundation out there? The foundation is there, and we, you know, but I tried to get, uh, I called the University of New Hampshire Architectural Department, and they were really excited. But when they found out it was in Berwick, like everything else, you can't cross state lines, right? Oh, God. So then I called the University of Maine. They were not as excited to get any of their uh, students down here. So, uh, because it has to be, what do they call it? Excavation? The, 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 uh, yeah. the excavation part of it is pretty expensive and it's pretty complex and uh, takes some money. So, they do now the Boy Scouts, uh, like at the Lord Cemetery, one of the uh, one of the Boy Scouts, I forget the gentleman, the kid's name, but uh, he got that was his Eagle Scout project was to go into the old Lord Cemetery and the moss on all the stones and, and clean all that up. And that's how he got his Eagle, uh, his Eagle Scout Award. The scouts here will help us, like Tony, or we talked about before, there's flags on Memorial Day, but in July, the scouts will uh, come and take them down for us. So that's one of their projects. I think we've, we had, uh, did we have a wedding here at one time? Yes. Uh, I guess, it, uh, I know that we had Easter Sunday uh, service sure. here from the Methodist we Church. Wedding, yeah. Yeah. They were here, and I think we had a wedding here, but if people are interested, they can come in and visit any time that the superintendent is here, or we can make arrangements for them to visit at any time at their convenience through the superintendent. Uh, but uh, if they want to... It primarily is designed for internment services, okay, primarily. But, you know, we're flexible. The best number to get a hold of us is 207-337-2881. That's the, uh, the super Tammy Matthews cell phone number, and that's the number by which you can get things done or requested from. Yeah, Tammy's great. Tammy's been a loyal, devoted employee for a long time. And we're very fortunate uh, that uh, Mr. Hill's original bequest of $90,000 had been significantly uh, invested uh, over the years so that we have an operating fund where we can have a full-time superintendent. These other cemeteries aren't large enough or whatever to have a full-time superintendent, but because of Mr. Hill and the investment of those funds over the significant number of years, we're, and with the perpetual fund interest and dividends, we're able to operate and have a full-time superintendent, okay, which is a great asset. She's golden. She'll be missed. Well, I won't be around then. I, <laughs> you won't be around And I either. won't be around. But she is golden. Well, we'll be underground, though. Uh, yeah, we'll be here. We'll be underground. Yeah, we'll be here. I think both of us will be here, am I right? <laughs> underground, yeah. Yeah, underground, yeah. <laughs> Well, we want to thank you, Terry, uh, for uh, taking the opportunity or offering this to us and, and doing this. Uh, you've, been, you've been a great asset to the town. BCTV has been very well, uh, very well received. That's and, correct. Uh, yeah. And you've done some great, some great projects. Thank you. Thank you.